Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Burnside Pack, which has three distinct things to the game. So first we get the Burnside Arrow Coupe, which is a unique vehicle based on the Burnside Special. Then we get the Old Box Utility Trailer, which is a trailer that looks great when attached to the Ute configuration of the Burnside Special, which is the third thing that is added in this mod. So let's just go ahead and get the beater configuration out here so you can see what it looks like. And the beater looks really, really scratched up, yet it's surprisingly shiny. It also has mismatched wheels, but most importantly, it has a big fat bed in the rear of the vehicle, which means you can put a big fat crate into the rear of the vehicle. Now for the important question, how well does it handle the crate? Starting with a simple suspension test, all we're gonna do is drive around from left to right on this road kind of chaotically, and you can see there's a lot of roll and movement in the vehicle, but it works. It holds the crate in place and we're not gonna tip over. That is what's most important here. And you can really see the movement happening when we're turning hard to the side and we hit a bump at the same time. Now for the extreme suspension test, going through the dirt and seeing what happens. This is a beater after all, so it should be expected that it does some difficult things like that. And splashing into the water actually probably saved me a lot of damage. And before we continue driving along, let's go ahead and take a look at that damage. It's beat up, but it makes sense. This is the beater. It's okay if it's beat up, although that front left wheel is pretty messed up. It is way off to the side. We probably have almost no steering from it. Whoa! How did you get stuck on a rock that small, car? Come on now. Don't do that. You can't be quitting already. We lightly crashed into the water after flying eh, quite some distance into the water. So, okay, it does make sense that it would be pretty badly damaged. The radiator is leaking, which is a concern, but we have a river right over here. So you know what that means, right? Anytime the car overheats in any way whatsoever, all we do is just go for a little swim and it'll be fine. So the temperature gauge right now is almost at 50%. We need to go through the water. Now watch what this does to the temperature gauge. If everything goes according to plan, it will go down. Look at that. We're now at like 10% of the temperature gauge, none percent of the temperature gauge. This thing is ice cold. And the transmission was being a little dumb there, but it makes sense. This is an old car with an old transmission. It's not going to be perfect. It will bog down when you do weird things like try to forward a river with a car that was never designed to do that, but does a surprisingly good job. After all, it's doing all of this while carrying a crate while pretty significantly damaged. So we're almost done with the beater. I just want to get it back up onto the road so that we have a good place to take a look at the next configuration. And oh no! Steering is not so good right now. Yeah, that front tire is messed up. Didn't notice it too badly driving in a straight line because I just had to keep correcting. But you try to do a corner tight, it's not going to go tight. Oh, and by the way, you can open the tailgate with the click of a button, just like the regular pickup trucks in the game. And we are on the road. That is a successful run from the beater. And you know what? It is a beater after all, so let's beat it. Go back down the hill and see, can it get wrecked up anymore? Actually, it's coping surprisingly well. There's a little bit of damage and there's a good amount of damage. Let's go ahead and flip it onto its wheels so we can take a look at that damage. Overall damage isn't actually significantly more, but the engine is gonna flood if I try to drive out of here, so the car is basically done. If we try to open and close the tailgate now, well, it's a little bit busted up, so that's not gonna work. All right, let's get it back up to the road up top and then we can drive another version of this vehicle. In addition to the beater, we also have the regular Ute, which is just the beater when it was a brand new vehicle. The interesting thing about both of these is they use an inline six engine, which none of the other versions of the Burnside Special use. That is exclusive to this mod. So then we also have the Ute V8 Dualmatic, the Ute V8 Supermatic, and lastly, the Ute Custom. So these two are just the normal version of the Burnside Special, but in a Ute configuration. So we're gonna skip those two and go straight to the Custom. And on this one, we have an engine in the back. And this engine is actually kind of interesting because if you look closely, not only is it supercharged, it's also a V10 engine. So where did the supercharged V10 engine come from? That, my friends, is a mystery because none of the vehicles that come with the mod actually use a V10 engine. So let's go ahead and do a quick 180 here so we can drive along the road instead of going through the tunnel because the tunnel's kind of boring. And according to the sign, the speed limit is 80 miles per hour. So we're flooring it to get up to those speeds and we are there and we can keep on flooring it and it should pull pretty well. 
And if we want to get better aerodynamics, we can open up the tailgate, which may or may not make things better. I have no clue. But you really get to see the wood on the trailer. And I think that wood looks really nice. And you can actually see the tailgate's jiggling a bit. So let's go ahead and close it so it doesn't fall off. And now we're going 130 miles per hour. Engine's overheating. Time for a crash. Let's just go up on this hill and see what happens. There goes the engine. Bye, engine. Whoa! That I did not expect. We really got stuck on that tree bush thing. And it caused some massive damage. The whole front is completely out of sync with the rest of the vehicle. It looks like the front basically fell off and is sitting next to me. That is crazy. And over on the rear, actually, the rear looks pretty good <laughs> compared to how wrecked up the front got. Just one more final look at that front because it got shredded. And before we attach a trailer to this, real quickly, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the vehicle. So the front half, you know, it looks like an old burn side. And then behind us, we have the custom bits. So you can see this whole section here is all customized. It looks a little bit unusual, but it looks fine overall. And one thing I really like is you can't really see it, but if you look straight down behind the seats, there's even a nice little logo down there and it has a lot of texturing back there. So the parts that you can't see even look pretty good. So back to the outside and let's go ahead and get a trailer out here. So with the old box utility trailer, there's some that come loaded and some that come unloaded. I'm going to get the one that's loaded with a box so we have a lot of weight to carry around. And then for the vehicle, we do need to add the hitch to it manually. So you can just type the words hitch to find it and then slap it on. And heck, we're in the parts menu, so why not do a small modification to the engine and make it even bigger? Well, the engine itself will be the same size, but we're going to put a stage 3 supercharger on it. And then while I'm here, I probably want to make sure we got the high performance drag radiator because we need to keep this thing cool. And now my ute is ready to go and do some towing. So let's go ahead and attach that trailer. Try to do it all in one motion, just forward and then backward. Oh, this is gonna be tight. Come on, trailer, get on there. You know you want it. All right. Now, can we finish doing this churn? Ooh, it's tight, but we're making it full speed ahead. Ooh, one thing I didn't think about. The engine itself is not actually upgraded more than normal, so I could just blow up the whole engine block. It looks like it's okay though. We're at 100 miles per hour and I'm still flooring it, so we're going to be okay. The engine's not going to blow up, thank goodness. And trailers can get sketchy at any speed over like 100 miles per hour, it seems like. So it's getting a little bad, but I still have control over it. Swerving around, just keep going fast. It'll stay in line, just pull it along. And it is a pretty heavy trailer too because it's like 400 kilograms which is like 200 liters of milk or something like that. In American, it's about 800 pounds. Alright, here we go. We're going to try to flip the trailer over by doing an aggressive maneuver. So here we go. Come on trailer, hold on or flip. What are you going to do? Come on, flip it. Ooh, it held on pretty good. And I just noticed the supercharger sticks right through the hood. <laughs> I did not notice that until now. Alright, we're going to whack the trailer into those rocks and see if that will flip it over. So here we go. Oh, come on, trailer. No way you can do it. Yes. Oh, but it's back onto his wheels. <laughs> it is bouncing all over the place. That left wheel is all sort of messed up. It is not a circle anymore. <laughs> and it's even worse to control than before. It is swaying all over the place. And I'm not trying to make it sway. I'm just trying to go fast here. Oh, no. I've lost control. Oh. Whoa. -ho. Oh man, eventually the trailer just got me to lose control actually and it lost control at the worst possible time. Completely wrapping itself around that pole. And then the most sad part about all this, the engine I was carrying, the beautiful supercharged V10 engine has fallen out. And so is the crate of mystery. What does the crate have? Probably another engine in it. And that's going to do it for the ute and the trailer. So now we're going to take a look at the Burnside Aero Coupe. The first two options we'll come back to because those are derby options. Instead, we're going to start with the inline six, which is available in both manual and dual matic, which is just a fancy automatic. We're going to get the dual matic though because it has a cool two-tone paint job. And we got to move it just a little bit because the camera's all messed up because of the trailer. There we go. Away from the trailer and we can actually see the vehicle. And I got to say, I really like the shape of the body of this vehicle. It looks cool. It almost has like this retro futuristic feel, I feel like. Like it kind of looks futuristic, but from the past, right? It looks good though, either way. Let's go ahead and pop into the inside of the vehicle and you can see 
Well, for some reason, my camera's not moving on the inside, so we'll use this camera there. Okay, that's working. That's strange. So the front, all normal burn side, but I do like the fact that it actually says Aero Coupe on the dash. That's a nice little touch. And then behind us, it all looks pretty similar to a normal burn side, except for when you look through the rear, your visibility is very, very small with this cool body style. And you can see, we just barely make out the trailer that's directly behind us. So that is definitely a little bit sketchy, isn't it? And we look through the mirror. Well, the mirrors in this game always kind of suck because they're so small, you never really see what's there. But the trailer is there. As for the performance, this one is the inline six engine. So performance is not that great. This is an old car with the base engine configuration. So right now we're flooring it and we're finally up to 35 miles per hour. Another half hour or so, we'll be up to 60 miles per hour. Here we go. And 60. It basically does 60 miles per hour in first gear, which is pretty neat. <laughs> Completely pointless metric since it only has two gears, but it is pretty neat. And we're getting it all the way up to about 80 miles per hour, which is good enough for me to go ahead and do a little crashing maneuver. We're just gonna fling it off of the road like so and see what happens. We're gonna land right on the back. There goes the best feature of the vehicle, completely ruining the cool Aero Coupe style body. And it's just a bit of a pain to see things here with all the bushes and stuff. So let's just go ahead and save the damage, bring it back up to the road, and then put the damage back on it. Ah, yes. What a poor vehicle. And apparently, oh, there we go. That wheel on the side is still spinning, the other one's not. And you can actually see the wheel expands in size when it spins faster. And then it gets smaller when it gets slower. That's a nifty thing that all wheels do, but usually you don't notice it that easily. Anyways, there's a the damage to the vehicle. We got some serious frame bending going on, it looks like. That's why the wheels aren't touching the ground properly. But the way the damage hit looks pretty good. And one neat thing you can do with this vehicle is you can pop up in the trunk whenever you want and take a look inside. The one thing that throws me off though is it's a different button to open the trunk than it is to open the tailgate. I feel like those would be the same button, but one is O and the other one is K. I do like how it bounces around. You can see as we go through this bumpy terrain, it almost closes, but it doesn't actually latch as far as I can tell. It'll always pop itself back open and oh, what? How did you hydro lock? It wasn't even that deep. All right, so we are now done with the inline six configuration. So let's move up to the inline eight. And this is an interesting engine because no modern car that I can think of uses an inline eight engine. So let's go ahead and pop open the hood so you can see what it looks like. And you see it's just a really long and thin engine. And the reason you don't use them nowadays is because to have an engine bay big enough to support an inline eight just doesn't make sense when you can get a V8 that puts the piston side by side, which reduces the length by a ton, which means you get more room for the people actually in the car instead of just having space for the engine. But this car here is a big old engine bay, so you can put a big old engine in it. I also do like the fact that it actually says Burnside on it, and you can see clearly, yep, that's an inline eight engine, and it looks pretty cool. And also, when we get to the Derby one, it has a hood exit exhaust, which you'll see as well. So let's go ahead and put that hood back on and go for a little bit of a drive. And just for fun, let's go ahead and pop open that trunk for maximum speed. How does this help us acquire maximum speed? Don't ask those kinds of questions. But the ideal thing to do is just open and close it a little bit so it bounces from half open to half closed. And that'll get you maximum speed. Because it's like a wing on a bird. It's flapping to push us forward. I don't think it actually makes any difference whatsoever if you flap it, but it's a nice thought. Anyways, time to wreck it. Going right into the bushes. Got a little bit of upside down and then right side up. Does it drive? No, not really. It's done. It is not going anywhere after that. Look at how low to the ground it looks right here. That looks nice. Unfortunately, that's also completely dysfunctional because it's not supposed to be that low to the ground. So not too much damage. It's just it crashed in a way that happened to ruin it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next configuration of the Aero Coupe. So we have an inline six and an inline eight derby. As far as I can tell, they're basically the same except for the engine. So I'm getting the inline eight because then you can see the exhaust and it just looks so ridiculous having that many pipes all sticking out of the hood like that. And I was kind of curious, why are they grouped together? And there's really no particular reason for it as far as I can tell. It's just an aesthetic choice. If you wanted them all be separate, you could have done that as well. And if it was up to me, I'd probably have them separate because I think it looked more mean and aggressive. Like everybody sees, oh wow, there's eight pipes there. But when you put them together like that, it's like, is that just four and then you zoom in oh no it's eight but it looks like four really fat ones anyways performance wise it's about the same as the last one it does look a lot faster because we were going downhill don't let that deceive you so here's some kind of derby style stuff where we bounce this thing and see what happens to it 
And ooh, that wheel is not looking good. Can we steer it all after that? Ooh, not really. It's not driving. It's done. And it's really all that front wheel's fault. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's not supposed to be doing things like that. That's for sure. I'm actually surprised this smashed up the suspension that badly. I expected it to still drive just badly, not, oh, I'm completely destroyed. It can no longer drive at all. So we got a fresh one because I didn't get to drive it that much. And I do love the pollution that this thing gives off. Just a non-stop stream of black smoke coming out of the exhaust. This engine is perfectly tuned for maximum performance. It's not really. It should not be doing that if it was tuned properly because this ain't no diesel. We ain't trying to roll coal. This is a gas-powered car that has actually broken itself again just from hitting the wall like that. Derby car, surprisingly not durable. That I did not expect. And now it's starting to roll backwards. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and go to the next configuration. And this one is going to be the Custom. And this one's nice because it has a real decent engine in it. Now, don't trust the stats that are listed because they're straight up wrong. So the actual engine has about 300 foot-pounds of torque and 200 horsepower. It's still based on the same straight 8 engine we saw earlier, but it has some upgrades to it. Nothing crazy like a supercharger or a turbocharger. It just lets it breathe better, which helps it get some better performance. And have I already destroyed the vehicle just like that? The answer is yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Aero Coupe, when you hit the front and break that front suspension, it can really get messed up fast. So I think I'm done with the Custom because you know it's even better than the Custom? The next version. So here's the final crash. We lost the wheel. It is done. Here's a quick look at the damage to the vehicle. Nothing too serious looking, but it's done in terms of driving. So we'll bring it back up. And now we're going to take a look at my favorite version. And this one is called the Wannabe Hot Rod. And I like it because it has a cool paint job. Everybody loves flames on a classic car like this. It's beautiful. And one thing I like is you can also change the color of the flames individually. So both the orange and the yellow can be modified to whatever color you want. So you can really customize the way this car looks super easily. If you have dreams of a weirdly painted car just like this with flames specifically, you can go at it and do exactly what you want. <laughs> We're driving in a mine shaft. I don't quite know. Basically, we're playing Minecraft right now, and this is my mine shaft I built all on my own. I have no idea where I'm going with this, but soon enough, we'll be going out of the tunnel. I believe this is the last corner, and there is freedom. Here's the real question. Can we get back onto the road without ruining the car? Try to avoid the rocks and slide to the pavement. All right. Now, engine-wise, it is the same as the Custom, as far as I can tell. Same 300 foot-pounds of torque and about 200 horsepower. And the way it drives, it's a really big, torquey engine. It's not a high horsepower engine. It almost feels like a diesel a little bit when you drive it. And it's just because it revs so low because it's an older engine. And it does have such a decent amount of torque in the low end. All right, that's enough of that. What are we going to crash into? Well, we're going to crash into that rock. I didn't even really mean to crash there, but sure, that works. There's another rock. That one we could not clear. Ooh, it's still going to try to put down the power, though. Come on. Oh, we don't got much steering. So let's just go ahead and say no and take a look at that damage. So we're back up here, and this time let's not go through the mine shaft. We'll go ahead and do a little 180 maneuver, and then we're going down the road. So hopefully we can get some decent speed. I don't think we'll be able to reach 100 miles per hour, but it'd be really cool if we did. Although I am not doing this corner really fast. It's not a good handling car. It's an old car. It handles just like it should, which isn't that great. So I should be happy with going 60 miles per hour. I should also be happy with it being able to maintain a slide that well. All right, so here we go. We got some downhill here. Going to get it up to 75, 80. We're not going to get to 100 because I want to fly. So about 80 miles per hour, got a nice flight. Popping the trunk open, landing on our wheels, which is probably worse than not landing on our wheels because it's completely destroyed the car. And the engine has broken, and I'm curious, is it going to fall out of the car? So we're going to just grab the car and put it into the air, and it holds. All right. It's just disconnected from everything, so it can't do anything. So here's a look at the damage. Poor flame car. I love the flames. Why am I destroying the things I love? It makes no sense. How about we do something stupid? Let's bring back 
the trailer, but we're going to put it on this guy because he has a more powerful engine, so he should be pretty good at towing things like the unloaded, or even better, the hay bale old box utility trailer. Although it is starting to roll away a bit. Hey, there's the other one. All right, we got to catch the trailer before it rolls down the cliff. Stop rolling away. Oh, it did stop rolling away. That's good. I crashed into it a little bit. So now we have the trailer attached and the trunk is open because I accidentally kind of fat fingered it, but that's fine. And here we get to really use that torque I was talking about. Oh, 300 foot pounds and it's actually doing pretty good it's considering we're going an uphill section like this. It doesn't feel like the trailer is significantly slowing us down compared to before. And I do like swerving the trailer all over the place. It is fun. And you know what there needs to be? There needs to be a serious simulation style racing game that actually has a race where you have trailers. I feel like the chaos of having trailers attached as you're trying to go around corners would be a lot of fun. Unless of course you're doing it like a multiplayer situation where all that happens is the people behind you smash into your trailer. That would suck. Although maybe the trailers could work as a bumper. So they ruin their car in the crash and your car is mostly okay because the trailer is a big fat cushion. I have no idea, all I'm doing is swinging the trailer around because it's fun and oh is it going to flip? Oh well we just delivered the hay. You thought we lost the hay but no, that is exactly where the bale of hay was supposed to go. That was a great success. And now we need to deliver the car in the trailer. Where do they get delivered to? Into the information center. Except oh no I forgot what brakes are. So we go over the rocks and go for a flight and then goodbye amazing flame vehicle. I barely knew you before you got wrecked once again. Well, it really doesn't matter what happens to it because the drive shaft is broken anyway, so it can't drive. I'm just going to come to a stop and hopefully we can take a look at the damage. There's a lot of smoke going on, but you can kind of see what happened there. And then looking at it from the other side, looks pretty equal amounts of damage on both the left and right sides of the vehicle. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and leave him there. It is time for everybody's favorite finisher, so we're going to go to Leap of Death. And for Leap of Death, we're going to keep using the wannabe hot rod just because it's the best looking one there is with the flame paint job. Although if we wanted to, we can make it white with the flame paint job. Probably. I haven't tested colors and colors don't seem to work if you do it like that. Thankfully, I already know that you can change the colors from the color menu so you can make the car itself white. And as I mentioned earlier, you can change the color of the flames as well so you can have black flames on the front and then yellow flames on the rear or whatever weird look you want. You know, the neat thing about flames is you make them different colors and actually they end up cooler most of the time because regular colored flames, those are played out. These ones are cool. Now just for fun, we're going to go ahead and do a leap of death with a trailer attached. You're going to do the empty trailer just so that way you can see what the trailer looks like as it goes down leap of death as well. So we attach the tow hitch and we are ready to go. I just got to try to maneuver my vehicle to attach the trailer which might not be the easiest thing to do. Come on back up. Back up. Oh no it can't back up. It can't do it. It's trying so hard but it sucks so no grabber help me out here. There we go. Alright, trailer attached, let's go. We're not going to go as fast as we could ideally, but it's not a fast car. So no matter what, it's not going to make it to the very bottom in one jump. And just for dramatic effect, look at that spiral. I threw that like a perfect football off a leap of death. Not even the man, Jared Allen, could have thrown it better than that. It was perfect, and then it was destroyed completely. The vehicle is separated from the frame, so there's a look at the body. Which kind of has a funky looking stretch going on. And then we got the frame of the vehicle as well down here with a couple of pieces still attached. And then there's the trailer which looks perfectly intact somehow. <laughs> a couple of dents and then it lost its wheels. And that probably, oh, well there goes the trailer. So we don't get to see him anymore. But the good news is the body is trying to reconnect with the frame. And it's going to become one vehicle. Okay, I was dreaming. There was no way that could have actually happened. But if it did, that would have been neat. Whoa, that's not good. That is not supposed to happen, but since we're here, let's go ahead and do Leap of Death one more time, but this time we're going to use the Ute Custom. No trailer on it this time, just the Ute vehicle itself, and then this time we're actually going to go at the normal speeds, which is about 65 miles per hour. Nice flat flight. It actually is flying really nice. I didn't expect that. I figured it'd be really front heavy, so it would just dive down immediately. It did dive down, but not immediately. So here we go, big impact. And the bad news is the V10 engine that I love so much is now gone. Goodbye V10 engine. I'm still kind of sad that the V10 engine was not an actual option 
for any of the vehicles in the mod. It's just, you got it in the trailer, man. You got to stick it in a car, too. And unfortunately, you can't just go into the parts menu and add in the V10. I checked. So on this one, though, the frame actually stayed attached to the body, which is nice. So you can see what's going on a little bit better. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how much I want them to bring back the El Camino, but they won't. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.